to my YouTube channel. Now in this video, I'm going to show you. This is a. Uh, I'm going to show you on uh, from four physics chapter two, part nine, which is uh, I'll summarize it to be the last part for chapter two. It will be uh, first starting off with elasticity, followed by Hooke's law, and then last part will be elastic potential energy. Now to start off with uh, the first part of it of my video, I mean the first part or subsection called elasticity. 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 What is it? Imagine you were given a sponge, a yellow sponge. A sponge. Okay. Okay, drawing one as right. Sponge. What happened is by what I have learned earlier, the effect of force. Force will change the uh, shape. What happened if I were to pull it this side and pull it the other side, opposite direction, maybe equivalent force or not, what happened, the shape would change, right? I mean, the sponge would be elongated, would be elongated now, I mean, would be very long now, and it become tint, right? And you hold it there, and you hold it here, I mean, you hold at this force. And then when you release it, when you release this force, what happens is it will return. Right? It will return to the original shape. Right? The same is true if you compress it. The same sponge. I mean, for car wash, same sponge. What happened? If you were to compress it, put it between your palm, you compress it. This is direction of force going in, going in. You compress this sponge, squeeze it. Then uh, well, the shape will be pretty hard to draw. Maybe I mean, I mean the shape will be maybe in this form, right? If you were to squeeze it, right? So what happened? You need to force, I mean, you need to uh, look into its molecule. Now, in terms of molecule, during our first case is when you pull them apart. What happened is when... Uh, left and right, I mean, I mean left and right, I would say, what happened is the molecule is being pulled apart. In terms of molecule, initially, this is here, they are bond, there's actually no bond, but there's no such bond, it's just that imagine they are bond, okay? When you pull them aside left and right, what happened, this position would be different now, right? It would be longer, right? But they are some force of interaction yeah, in between this atom where they would try to push among each other so that they would come back to the original position. This is the internal force, okay? These are the force within the atom. They will try to push among each other so that you will come back to original position. Okay, the same is true over here. This is original position. When you try to compress them into each other, what happened? It becomes so close. The electron valence among them so close, what happened, they will try to push among each other, trying to come back to its original position. So, if we want to plot this 
kind of force, the changes of uh, transition of this force, you may actually, uh, you comes up to the uh, the uh, textbook force, I mean, the non-equivalent force. I mean, that's explained in your, I mean, uh, in your reference text. Why is it, I mean, the shape is so uh, much different? That explain on a, uh, I mean uh, that that kind of explanation that uh, normally is not available in your text graphically. Okay, the same is true if you were to have a spring. Okay, imagine if now you are to have a spring. This is equivalent position. What happened? When you exert a force to the right and to the left, what happened? The molecule will be away, and what happened? This is the original position. When you were to compress them, you compress them. The same thing would happen. So that's where you have this. going up um, positive this is a force of um, repulsion between maybe I'll put it in another word another color so that you can uh, give a note repulsion between atoms you need to look into the atoms this is imagine you are now the atoms okay and uh, this is a positive direction whereas the negative direction, maybe we'll put it in another color, force of attraction. It's always between the four. This is where the negative, this is zero. So initially, you need to start off with your diagram. If you have your text reference with you, it's good. You look for where's the original position. Maybe it's here. This is my x naught position. This is where it's in equilibrium. Where there's no left, there's no right. Where well, this is equivalent initially. What happened if you were to squeeze them? Because it's zero, this is ten. If you bring it down, bring it nearer, you squeeze them. What happened? You are going to have this repulsion increases. This is where I mean it's non symmetrical. Okay? Now let me explain it to you over this graph try my best if the distance is being reduced distance this is distance huh? what happened this is the force of repulsion increase when the distance between molecule reduces the force of repulsion increases okay this is at equilibrium this is at equilibrium no force is uh, this is the equilibrium spot okay no left, no right force. Okay. Now, what happened? Maybe another color. When the distance between molecules or between atoms increase, what happened? When it increase, then the force of attraction increases. And this is a break point, a breaking point. Beyond this point, this is a minimum, this is a minimum point. Beyond this point, what happened? The force of attraction. What happened to this force of attraction? Beyond this point, beyond this uh, maximum point or breaking point, it starts to decrease. Going down is increased, going up will be decreased. Why is it decreasing? You may ask. It decreased because the atom, I mean, the atom start falling apart. The atom is falling apart. This is a maximum, a break, break point. Maybe a breaking point, a break point. Okay. So this is how uh, you want to read this. I um, mean, graph. This is distance of the atom. Okay? 
is how you read it. Where will you find this? If you overdo it, if you stretch this spring too far apart, then this spring will never come back to its original position. This is the position, yeah, the maximum. That's why you have whenever you have spring, you doesn't want the stretching force, yeah, you doesn't want to go over its maximum force. Overdoing it, it will cause the uh, spring will come back to its original position, and that's the same is true with spring, spring is true with sponge. Now, if in, uh, you are having a reference textbook, try, you know, look, read for the usage. What are the usage? You need to read, read for yourself. What are the usage of uh, spring in daily life? Usage of spring in daily life, it's, uh, sometimes it comes out in a structure question. Or other elastic material, okay? Usage. To look for its usage, uses. I mean, a uh, usage of uh, usage of spring. You need to read by yourself, and also other types of elastic uh, material. Okay. One of them will be your. I mean, the racket. I mean, the the spring in the racket or. in the um, springboard yeah? so read to it it might be useful look for those words that you might need okay then uh, next part will be called Hooke's Law you may pause this video and read, read through what is uh, elastic material and usage And then uh, also only only then you will go through my second part, which I call it Hooke's law. Hooke's law says anything that behaves Hooke's law, let's say a spring. Zero. There's a spring X. This is a force F. Whenever spring that will be a Hooke's law or the energy stored by the spring or not yet the part would be, if the distance, I mean the force increases, the extension of the spring is directly proportional to stretching force. That's all about it. Okay, it's a linear, linear graph. Like what you have uh, last time, you have y equals to mx curve. It's Hooke's law, Hooke's spring, I mean Hooke's law, where it says the extension in centimeter normally, extension of spring. It's uh, directly proportional. So meaning one is one, one centimeter, one uh, newton, like a spring. If you increase the spring by a newton, then the displacement is by one centimeter. That's all about it. So how I mean the experiment you need to read onto your experiment, of course, and in the book the procedure. Let me give you an idea. Original position. Maybe this is where your reference initial. You add, you add in weight, add on it, mass 1, mass 2, the next moment it will be elongate to here and eventually to here. Okay, The extension down to here, maybe this is my x1 and then here to here is my x1 and here to here is my x2 okay 
this is my zero position. What happened if you add a node into it? What happened? The whole spring, all the mass over the spring will be elongated. Further add on more mass on it, all the mass here will be elongated further. And then you plot it into a graph, you get a linear graph. Where Hooke's law says F is direct proportional to the extension spring. And in modern maths, you have F therefore equals to Kx, mathematically. So, how do they define this K? So therefore, K is actually, from here, is F over X, force per unit length, which carries a unit Newton per meter, which is a constant. Spring constant. What about this spring constant? What does it say? It's actually, what is it? It's actually called a stiffness. How stiff? It's actually called a stiffness of spring. How stiff is your spring? By knowing how many meter it will elongate by a newton. If uh, you're able to elongate more by using one Newton, then that is not a very stiff spring. Okay? Then uh, you may go through the exercise, look for the K constant. What's the K constant? So uh, maybe I'll put it this way if your K value is a huge value, maybe uh, a huge value, so it says you need a lot of Newton force to get a centimeter or a Newton, therefore you have a stiff spring. If K value is small, then it is not a very stiff curve. So therefore the gradient, okay, this is the changes of F, changes of X, therefore K is over x. So the stiffness. So if uh, in some questions, in objective questions, you know, sometimes you ask which spring is a stiff one. So maybe you have this is my f, this is my x. What happened is maybe I have a 1, 2, k1 spring, k2 spring, two different spring. Then they ask, which one is a soft spring, which one is a stiff spring? So therefore, obviously, by looking at this gradient, this is a lower gradient. So therefore, this would be a rather soft spring, where this is a very stiff spring. How is that so? Because in order to get one centimeter, you need very high force value yeah by looking at this by judging here I mean by the same value of length the magnitude of force here and here is different right this is a uh, f1 this is f2 Be of course for sure f2 must be greater than f1 you need a lot of force in order to get a centimeter maybe this is one centimeter you need a lot of force in order to elongate one centimeter. So which one is stiff? So therefore, K2 is a stiff one. K2 is actually the stiffness by looking at the gradient. Yeah? By looking at the gradient, you were able to tell which one will extend longer, which extension of spring will be longer. Right? So that's the key. Right? You may pause this video again. Pause this video. Go through your reference text. You know, okay, quite lots of... Uh, um, exercise available you may go through yeah about 10 to 15 questions you need to about that okay 10 to 15 questions in order to proceed to my next part of my video call part 3 call elastic potential energy.
elastic potential energy. Now, I assume you have paused this video already. If you haven't paused this video, I would advise, I personally advise you to pause this video. Look for any questions in your reference or in your I mean, exercise book or in your workbook, chapter by chapter workbook. Look for any questions related to Hooke's Law, especially the stiffness. Okay, this is the important part. You need to look for any questions, at least 15 questions, or 10, at least 10 questions, 15 is the best. Uh, otherwise, look for only 10 questions. Go through it. Look for the graph, you know, graphically or maybe mathematically. Then only you go to elastic, come to elastic potential energy. So, in uh, elastic potential energy, which is the third part or the last part of my series of video, OCW series of video, what is this? Says elastic potential energy. What is it? What does it mean? Elastic potential. Energy? What is it actually? It's actually the energy being able to store in a spring in a spring so it's actually a value how good is a spring or how good your spring to to uh, store an energy okay how do you store an energy in a spring oh, okay I mean energy store in a spring when is when it is extended or compressed. Okay. How is that so? How do you store it? How? It is by. It's a result. Result of work done. You do the work, right? It is that you compress it or you extend it. So you are doing work. Your the work that you have done is being stored in the spring. That's why we compare the original position. Okay, there are a few factor. Okay, a few factor affects the elasticity of a spring, of course, by the diameter. Okay, the factor. What are the factors? Okay, we will, I mean you can read through it. There are factors affecting her. Huh? How well a spring would store store energy, uh, a spring. I mean, a store energy. So by the length, okay. A short one have a steep uh, spring. I mean, uh, a short one maybe a uh, the short one we have a very steep spring. Thickness of the spring, of the coil, yeah, of a spring, yeah. Thickness. Um, thickness. A thick one. The K will be stronger, or perhaps. Um, the coil diameter. The coil. A small coil, the K is greater. It's a stiffer. If everything is the same material between uh, steel and copper, steel and copper comparison, what happened? Same parameter. What happened? The rest is the same. The rest is the same. Length, thickness, coil is the same. You compare different material. What happened? Still, we have a higher stiffness. Okay, so you want a short spring, thick diameter, small coiling. They all gives you the highest stiffness. Now that that doesn't uh, sum up the potential energy. Now, what's potential energy? Potential energy. You put it that way, or a spring. Let's go for a Hooke's law, a spring that obeys Hooke's law. Having that say, if I say a spring that obeys Hooke's law, then what about those who doesn't obey Hooke's law? Let's look at those that obey Hooke's law, which is linear, y equals mx. So the energy store is actually the area under the curve. Pretty simple, isn't it? 
So what's the area? The energy stored in this spring will therefore equals to half fx. Please don't confuse with work done. Yeah, this is half kx in terms of magnitude. Okay, and it's in joule energy store for spring. Okay, so therefore it's e equals to half fx and force of a spring is half kx isn't it from a spring then this is original x this is my x maybe x naught x naught x naught right so therefore energy store is basically half kx squared and this is where and this is how you find out the energy store in a spring half kx squared or you work done caused by work done or energy store okay I'll put it as a work done perhaps it's a result of work done right in a spring maybe a subscript spring okay half kx squared or half fx that obey Hooke's law they are instance but not in SPM maybe if you come across these those question hard questions what happened for those uh, who does then you have a curve fx when it were to be a curve energy store will always be area under the curve so here to here area under the curve how to do it this is you need to integrate them it's integration okay it's not in syllabus not in a SPM syllabus um, but uh, well okay this would be uh, f equals to maybe ax squared this is non hooks doesn't obey hooks law so in order to find out the uh, the uh, work done is uh, therefore is equivalent to dx okay from 0 to x okay maybe this is my x value you just integrate them and then eventually you put this equation to it integrate them you get the value as in joule and then just in zero is my previous video okay uh, yeah you may pause this video again and then uh, look for those questions that look uh, ask for energy store but normally is they are all always the case always uh, energy store is actually the area of this triangular it's always the case in SPM unless you look for other question overseas well, I mean the textbooks then maybe you come across with those that is uh, non hooks spring and uh, the arrangement system of spring that comes to leads to uh, elastic potential energy that really really last part is called system of spring it's very fast um, system of spring okay just give you an idea I can't I will not be able to summarize every condition so um, normally you've given three springs it will be either if you have three springs or three or four and above but three is the standard spring three standard spring equivalent spring equivalent K stiffness and it's arranged in series one two three okay they have equivalent spring is one k okay so what happened if I were to have a load M maybe 1 kg what happened is that if you have only one spring and by the same mass of 1 kg the 
elongation is x because if you have one kg all the metal all the steel in the spring would fill the pool if you were to arrange it in series all the atom in the spring would experience the same mass of 1 kg therefore the total elongation is 3x elongation would therefore be triple 3x three okay okay x not lah maybe huh? x not x not elongation is x not okay meaning from here elongate to here maybe next moment that will be here i mean uh, i mean to be i mean specific So this is the elongation. We talk about elongation, not the length of the spring. It's the elongation from here to here. So this is the elongation. Okay. So you have three series, three spring arranged in series. They all fill the same pool. All atoms fill the same pool. Now, likewise in parallel. What happened in parallel? Parallel meaning they are side by side. Okay, if they are side by side. Okay, crossbar, and then this is my mass of same m. What happened? All three share the same load. Therefore. Your elongation will be shared among these three, so therefore that will be x naught over three because there are three springs. Okay, because the tension at each spring is now being shared, it's being shared among each other. The total mass, total weight is being shared among among them. Series parallel, followed by um. Special case combination of them, a combination. If you put your combination, the same three spring, maybe one parallel. Okay, parallel, and then here. Okay, what happened? Mass, weight, or attention. First of all. All three of this spring would feel the same mass, would be elongated by the same mass. Just that now, over here, this portion, the elongation would be x naught over 2, whereas this is only one spring, one spring is feeling the mass of m, so this is x naught, whereas here it's being shared among them. So therefore, the total elongation in this system would therefore be one and a half, one and a half x naught. Okay. They have the same stiffness. Okay. Right. I think that's basically all about it. If you go through your textbook reference, why is it so? Why is it like that? I mean, the trick would be if they are over the same area, they are side by side, the elongation is being shared. If it would have been series, then like there, this case, this spring is the tension by this spring is caused by this M. There's no one sharing the load. Okay. So that's basically all about it. You may want to um, pause this video, go through questions, maybe uh, this one 8 to 10 questions should be sufficient in order to do that and you may uh, want to relate uh, conservation law of energy when there's a movement a spring cause a movement then the work done has been uh, the work store by spring is now from potential spring energy is now being 
transfer into kinetic energy and make use of the uh, half mv squared and then sometimes it asks you to look for the uh, velocity I think uh, you go through your workbook reference 8 to 10 questions you might need for your starter and I hope it helps you in your chapter 2 you need to have practice yeah practice makes perfect stay tuned to my next video thank you